many rejections, but we have a Father who loves and cares for us. And He loves everyone in spite of our condition, in spite of what sin we commit, in spite of what God loves us and He cares for us. He lived one, He lived 99, and He went for one. And to this evening, Don Ola's life is in the hands of God. I might not be a person to ball, but the love in my heart for her. And I know that if God wanted to keep Don Ola here, she would have been here. But the Bible says, appointed unto man, wants to die, but after death is the judgment. And God knows everything about Don Ola. And I pray that her life, God cut it short. But we that here and alive still that he will get ourselves prepared to meet the lord she's in a good place with the lord because i went to the hospital i spoke to her i said donola do you know the lord as your savior she said yes i said have you repented of your sins she said yes Tante Annie. and you know that gave me peace that gave me consolation that gave me assurance so i know where she is so god Bless and comfort everyone here this afternoon. Amen. She in the best place. Amen. The best place is in the arms of the Lord. You have said it well, Auntie. Any final one reflection before we commence officially? We have some sisters coming and then they will share. Good afternoon to everyone. I gathered here this afternoon to celebrate the life of Danola. So at this time, we are going to do a rendition. We hope it blesses your heart. Some say love, it is a river that draws a tender reed. Some say love, it is a razor that leaves a soul to bleed. Some say love. And endless aching me. I say, love, it is a flower, and you, it's only seed. It's the heart afraid of the aching that never learns to dance it's the dream afraid of waking that never takes a chance it's the one who won't be taken cannot seem to give and the soul afraid of dying that never learns to live when the night has been too lonely and the road has been too long and you think that love is only for the lucky and the strong just remember in the winter far beneath the bitter no lies a seed that with the sun's love in the spring 
becomes a rose. Rest in peace, Canola. Amen. So we thank the Hopkins sisters for sharing in that wonderful tribute. And at the front here, we have some persons who are viewing the body. Feel free, if it is your desire, feel free to come and, and take your view of our dear sister. And at this juncture, we are going to officially begin this homegoing ceremony for our dear sister, Sister Donola St. Clair. So greetings to everyone and good afternoon in Jesus' mighty name. Is all well? Amen. Amen. God has been good to you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Our God is mighty. Amen. And we thank God for all that he has done. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful, a mighty, a powerful God that he is. So we are thankful to all those who are here to join in this afternoon's celebration. We have persons who are viewing in online. We say a pleasant good afternoon to you. And all those who are here um, face to face, we also thank you. Here we have um, the family seated at the front. We have the mom of Sister Donola. She has her brothers here, her sisters here, aunts and cousins, nephews, nieces. I know some of you are Donola's classmates maybe workmates, maybe neighbors, whosoever you are and wherever you came from, we thank you for being here this afternoon to share in this wonderful homegoing ceremony. We also acknowledge in our presence our dear bishop, Bishop Richard Hopkins. He is the general overseer for this island here, for Grenada, for the Church of God of Prophecy. Welcome to you and your daughters who just sang, we also welcome all the other ministers and their wives that are in the house of the Lord this afternoon. Amen? Donola, as we know it, has been a wonderful soul, hasn't she? A wonderful individual, a wonderful sister, a wonderful cousin to so many persons, a wonderful friend. So today, we're going to do what is within our power, all the best that we can to appreciate the life that she has lived and appreciate the many ways in which she has touched our lives. It was for a brief moment, but it was impactful. She surely has left an indelible mark upon all of our lives in one way or another. So to commence here this afternoon, we're going to begin with a, an item on the pan, and this item would be played by... Her friend, Michaela Williams. So, Michaela, the floor is now yours. Let us listen to this special tribute to Sister Donola. Following this, her cousin, Caleb Redhead, will come and do a rendition using his violin. Hello? So we just have a slight change. So the person playing the violin, he would make his first appearance and do that rendition of music. And this will be followed by Michaela. A pleasant good afternoon. My name is Caleb Redhead. And I'm Danola's cousin. I'll be playing after all.
Amen. Thank you, Lord. What a beautiful rendition by our brother Caleb. Amen. He was crucified. And I like the part that says, like a rose, he was trampled on the ground. But why he did it? He took the fall for you and for me. He took the fall for Donola. Amen. So we can be rest assured because he has got our back. Thank you, Brother Caleb, for your rendition. And now we're going to move swiftly to the pan rendition. Amen. Thank you to the drummer and the pianist for the beautiful rendition. I was wondering if they had planned. The violinist, you planned? Okay, no, it was all coincidence. And they both played the same song. So we really, really, there's probably a special message somewhere inside of there that we have to take home from today's homegoing service. Amen? He was crucified. Both played the same song. 
And while this, the, the music was being played, many of you were not able to view it. But on the screen, there was a nice set of pictures that were passing by, depicting all the things and places and people that Donula celebrated with. Amen? A nice slide show at the back. So if you could just turn your neck a little bit, you might be able to see some of those pictures that are going right there. We acknowledge the presence of our senior bishop, Bishop Simon John, at this moment. Thank you, sir, for gracing us with your presence, seated right at the front. And we are going to move now into our congregational song. And this song would be led by the worship team. So I now invite the worship team. And following this, we are going to invite the man of God to come and to open this homegoing service with prayer. Thank you, Sister Bernice. Burnett, my apologies. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Good afternoon to everyone. Praise the name of Jesus. God is this afternoon. We give him the praise and the glory and the honor. You know, my condolences to the family and loved ones. Mommy, God bless you. <laughs> Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We like everyone to stand as we give God some praise, as we give him some glory this afternoon for truly he deserves it he deserves the glory he deserves the honor for to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord praise the name of jesus we thank god that we have a hope in jesus christ praise god praise god hallelujah Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right where you are, if you love Jesus, just begin to give him the glory and give him the honor and the praise. There are times we have to push through the pain and just worship God because even in worship, there is healing. There is deliverance. Even in worship, the bruises and the scars begin to heal. Hallelujah. 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 As this song says, let's forget about ourselves, concentrate on Him, and worship Him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus, because He made a way. He made a way on that third day. When He burst the tomb, He made a way so that we can live forever. Praise the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you the victory over death. We thank you for the victory over the grave. We give you praise. We give you honor. This afternoon, Lord, we bless your name. Praise the name of Jesus. All my help comes from the Lord. Hallelujah. comes from the Lord, all my help comes from the Lord, all my needs he will supply, all my help comes from the Lord. Everybody sing, all my help comes from the Lord, all my help comes from the Lord, all my needs, all my needs, he will supply, he will supply. Turn my life around, Jehovah. Turn my life around. He made a way where there is no way. Jehovah has a final sin. So 
tell me who has the final say. Let me hear you tell me who has the final say. Jehovah turn my life around. Jehovah turn my life around. He made a way. Jesus, look where you brought me from. Look where you brought me from. I was down in the world doing what I please. But look where you brought me from. Look, look, look where you brought me from. Where you brought me from. Look where you brought me from. I was down in the world doing what I please. But look where you brought me from. Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, precious of sin. I stay no longer with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I made up my mind. Oh, God's way the rest of my life. All my hell, all my hell comes from the Lord. of this circumstance because we know the God in whom we serve. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Keep standing as you now invite Minister Vernon Klein to open this with prayer. Thank you. Let us bow our heads together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment because your word declares everything. We must give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning us we thank you lord for everyone that is present we thank you for your holy spirit that is with us because the word declare that where two and three are gathered 
together in your name, that you are in the midst. And we thank you for being in the midst of us all. Because we know that when you are in the midst, things will be different. There will be transformation. There will be comfort. There will be hope. There will be strength. Oh, we say thanks for being with us this afternoon. Thank you, Lord, for the friends and relatives of the deceased. May you give us all together strength to go through this time of bereavement. Let your Holy Spirit comfort our hearts. Help us remember your word that tell us everything work together for good to them that love the Lord. We are saddened by the passing of our dear sister. But you know what was before her, what she was going to face tomorrow. So you see it fit to call her today. We say thanks. We say thanks. We ask you now, Lord, just to come down and bless. Let this moment be a time of worship. When you remember Job, all what he lost, he worship you. Help us to just worship you. So you can lift our burden. You can comfort our hearts. And you can strengthen us. We thank you for what you're going to do this afternoon in this funeral. I believe, oh God, this is a time of refreshing, of revival. We say thanks. Have your divine way. Remember your man's servant who will be ministering your word. We ask you, Lord, to inspire him and give him a word for the hour so that our hearts can be uplifted and we can live here strengthened. Have your divine way as you commit this rest of the service into your precious hands. Thy will be done in Jesus' name. Could you say praise the Lord? God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. And before you take your seats again, I want to invite you to stand as we have the scripture reading. And it will be taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We're going to be doing from verses 1 to 8. And I wish to invite Donola's sister-in-law, Sister Monique St. Clair, to come to do this reading for us. Amen. So those of you who have your Bibles or your phones, you can read along with us. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. Following this, Sister Donola's cousin, Diana, she would come to do a special song for us. Good afternoon, everyone. Ecclesiastes 3, verse 1 to 8. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Monique. You can now have your seats. There is a time for everything under the sun. Amen. There is no one time when you would remain in one particular situation for a lengthy time because time changes. And is time in our hands? No, time is in the hands of the Lord. 
he makes a decision concerning what he wants to do and decisions concerning our lives. So I would now invite Sister Diana to come and she would be doing a special song. Now I'm going to take back one thing I said before and that concerns the slideshow, you know, looking from up here, I was seeing it and thinking, you were not seeing it. <laughs> and I just discovered that you are seeing it. Amen. So continue to view, you know, all the lovely pictures of our dear sister. And for those of you who wish to, you can still come forward and you can view the body that is here. Amen. And we have to continue to remind ourselves, this is just the shell. Tell us about this is just the shell this is not donola she's already in the place that was destined for her in the arms of the lord amen all right our dear sister diana are you ready all right and she is coming following that special song we're going to move to the eulogy so my dear sister you're going to get yourself ready so you can share with us um, all that you want us to remember and all that you remembered from the life of Sister Donola St. Clair. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are in our special Thanksgiving service and God be praised. We thank God for what he has done for our dear sister. A pleasant good afternoon to one and all. His song is dedicated to my cousin, Donola. Our prayers have all been answered. I finally realize the healing that has been delayed has now been realized. No one's in a hurry. There's no schedule to keep. We're all enjoying Jesus, just seated at his feet. If you see me now, I'm walking the streets of gold. If you can see me now, I'm standing tall and whole. If you can see me now, you know I've seen his face. If you can see me now, you know the pain is erased. You will never want me to leave this perfect place. If you only see me now, my light and temporary trials have worked out for my good. To know it brought him glory when I misunderstood. Though I've had some sorrows, they can never compare. What Jesus has in store for us, no language can share. If you could see her now, she's walking the streets of gold. If you can see her now, she's standing tall and whole. If you can see her now, you know he's seen her face if you can see her now you know the pains erase you will never want her to leave this perfect place if you only see her now oh, if you see her now oh she's walking the streets of gold oh if you can see her now oh she's standing tall and whole if you can see her now she you know she's seen his 
his face. Only if you could see her now, you know the pain she raised. You will never. Tonola, we love you. Amen, if you can see her now. I know many of us can probably picture her when she was alive and to have a fond memory that you remember when she was alive. But I think that where she is now, that, that memory, that place is even better than where we are now. Is it not better? Amen. We have not gone there yet, but we have read about it. We have heard about it. We have studied it. And we know for sure there's a song that says, Across the River... There'll be no more sorrow, no more pain, no more stress, no more bills, no more of anything that would, that would conflict us and cause chaos and confusion in our lives. A place of perfect peace. Sometimes we'd want to be selfish and want her to remain on this filthy earth. But where she is now, it's the best place. Amen? She is in a better place. Now, as we walk through life, life is a journey. We all have to live that life. And there are things that we're going to do that would make people remember us for the rest of our lives, whether we are here or we are not here. And we know that Don Nola would have done a lot of things that people will remember. So to do a little reflection and to share some of these memories with us, I'm going to invite Dr. Alana Charles, the sister-in-law of Don Nola, and she would come and share these with us. For those who are joining us online, we welcome you. And those who came in after the official welcome, we also welcome you here today. Good afternoon to everyone. I stand here representing the family as we share a small part of the life of a beautiful, lively, and high-spirited young woman. On 12th December, 1988, a beautiful baby girl was born to Julian and Philippa St. Clair of Gulf Coast Grand Anse St. George. She was named Donola Nerissa St. Clair, and often affectionately called Boops, Boopsy, and Dons. She was the last of six children, namely Hermione, Ryan, as many call Pedro, Julius, Donlin, Phil Dunn, and of course Donola, who was very much loved by her parents and siblings. While growing up, Donola's life was not short of excitement, since Tampa, her mom, had a way of pairing her children. So she had Hermione and Pedro, Julius and Donlin, and then she had Fildon and Donola. Each one had one which created a special bond among the siblings that exist up to this day. Donola had a strong spirit and one might say she was a bit stubborn. After all, she took a bit from her dad. But mind you, she was a daddy's girl as a child. We remember, and we meaning that's the family reflecting, every Friday, Daddy was definitely bringing something home for her, which she shared with us. Donola was a fighter, and she did not hesitate to boss a fight if she felt she was right. Phil Don can clearly remember when Donola bust his head when she was only five years old. He was teasing her a bit, just as brothers do sometimes. She asked him to stop. But did he? He continued just having fun. 
she left where she was and went into the bedroom. But he followed her and continued to tease her. Without hesitation, she grabbed a tub of Vaseline and threw it at him, which connected with his head. The evidence can be seen each time Phil Don trims his hair, and maybe that's why he didn't trim. <laughs> and when he sees the scar, that reminds him never to mess with little sis. Each sibling shared a special bond with their baby sister. Donlin and Donola had many chats, and at the end of the day, she would say to Donlin, yes, finally, you're more going to bed. And they would laugh it out. Julius often picked her up from preschool, so they had a unique bond from a tender age. He remembered her saying she wanted to join the worship team when she got older. And although he remembers getting into trouble with daddy for her, he has always tried his best to always be there for her, even up to the very last. As Pedro reflected, he spoke of the calls or voice notes that he would receive on every special occasion, whether it was birthday, Christmas, New Year's, Father's Day, if he received greetings from no one else, he was sure to receive some from Boopsy, as he so affectionately referred to her. And I too can attest to this, and I'm sure many of you can also. Hermione, the oldest of them all, remembers pinching her behind when she ran around without underwear, as she seemed to enjoy. In light of that, when she was pantyless and saw Hermione coming, she would run to Tampa and say, Panty, Panty, right? Hmm, those days. As children, we spent our August holidays in St. Andrew. There, Donola enjoyed spending time with our late Aunt Agnes, who we called Thais, and our many cousins, whom I am sure have many fond memories to share. But Donola had a fear of sheep as a child, especially lambs. One day, she and Fildon, remember that's her peer, were heading to the pasture in Gulf Coast where, she, where a lamb had strayed from its mother. Upon seeing the lamb, Donola released her brother's hand and started running back down the hill. Unfortunately for her, when the lamb saw her running, it started chasing her. Now she started bawling for help and the lamb was bleating behind her. Her father rushed out of the shop to see what the commotion was about, only to realize what was taking place. Oh, it was a good laugh indeed. Though she feared lambs, she had a deep, strong love for dogs. She even named one Boopsy after herself, and when it passed away, she was deeply saddened. Throughout her short life, her love for dogs remained. An important part of her teenage life was that of youth camp experiences. Since she spoke about it only a few weeks before her transitioning. In youth camp, she believed that this was where true friendships were made and it was also time well spent in the presence of God. She spoke of the service held at Belmont Society Hall. She recalled the time when they sensed that the church service was heavy. They would go to the back of the room and start praying until the atmosphere changed 
and the Spirit of God was able to move. Fildon personally remembers her laying her hands on him and praying for, with, praying for him until he was touched by the Holy Spirit. Donola also belonged to a special group which was referred to as the Golden Generations. And I'm sure persons from the Golden Generations know who they are. Now, Donola attended the South St. George Government School and then proceeded to Happy Hill Secondary where she made many friends and she was loved by both her friends and her teachers. She enjoyed singing. On Sunday evenings, she and Don Lynn would spend time listening to Seduction Sunday and would both sing along to the music. And to be honest, they sounded really good. But for sure, Donola was the song star. With the strong spiritual influence of Julius, she developed a love for gospel songs of which she had many favorites. The Anchor Halls, When You See Me Smiling, and Eagle Wings, just to name a few. The list could go on and on and on. Donola also developed a love for cooking. This she took from parents, aunts, uncles, and even her brother, who is a qualified chef. If you don't believe me, ask the guys at Mardi Gras. Just bring the stuff and she will prepare the pot. She hands sweet. Donola, along with the rest of her siblings, were trained for the work field at a very young age. She was exposed to the operation of the family-owned business. This opportunity gave her the foundation skills needed to, to be successful in the workforce. Therefore, after graduating Happy Hill Secondary School, she worked at Nikki's Shoe Shop, where she showed good customer service along with a smile, until eventually it closed down. She then landed at the shop in St. Paul's, where she was in charge of sales. She then moved to another shop at Mardi Gras, where she boosted the business and so she was given the place to manage. Unfortunately, she had to give that up. That didn't break her. She then started to work with her brother in the restaurant. Additionally, she ran a shop in Mardi Gras because she liked being independent and doing her own thing. She alternated working at her home business at Mardi Gras and her brother's restaurant in the industrial park up to the very last strength. Donola's friends had many things to say about her also. Trisha and others shared that once you came into contact with Donola, she was definitely fun to be around, which can be described as sunshine on a rainy day. She was hope when all seemed lost a helping hand to one in need and joy in time of pain. She was a loving godmother to many, but loved children on a whole. Samantha can, attest, can testify to that. Gone boopsy, but not forgotten. As I conclude, Donola, you were special, and when we look at you, we see a piece of all of us within you. With faith, your strong will and sternness, in this way you expressed daddy. With your love for people to meet and socialize, your ability to make them laugh, you demonstrated Tampa. With your unwavering love for family, in spite of the situation, you exhibited Hermione. With a heart of love and a willingness to care for and share with children, you showed Pedro. After all, you both shared the same birth month, just a couple days apart. With a serious face at times, but it only means love 
along with humility, a strong passion in, in what you're doing, you were like Julius. With your talking, laughing, and that unforgettable smile which can light up the darkest day, you represent Donlin. With your fervent love and deep fire to stand up for family, you depict Fildon, Donola, our sister. We miss you, yet you continue to live on through each of us. Fly with the angels, baby sister. Amen. What a fitting tribute. Amen. Amen. And everything that she said at the end, I mean, it connects. Everything is true. How she represents each and every one of her siblings. Quite true and quite fitting. Amen. We thank God for that life that Sister Donola has led. It was a short life, but a life well spent. She did a lot. She saw a lot. And she moved around with a lot of people and touched their lives in very special ways. We would now invite Brother Loxton Mitchell to do a special song at this time. And this would be followed by a special poem from her little nieces and nephews. Amen? And as I listened to the tribute, I was there thinking, let us, us, leave a good legacy behind. You know that life is short. Sometimes, you know, we try to do so many things that does not make sense, right? So many things that, I mean, it is unthinkable. Let us live a life that is pleasing to God. So that not just so when we die, people would have good things to say. But at the end, we know that we'll be in the arms of the Lord. This is our final intention. should be our final hope. Where will we spend eternity? Amen? So all the fussing and fighting and fighting, they do not amount to anything. Live a good life. Amen? And you will be blessed. Cause when you try your best but you don't succeed Then you get what you want but not what you need When you feel alone but you just can't sleep Stuck in reverse When the tears come streaming down your face When you lose something you can't replace What could be worse worse
Cause light will guide you home And ignite your bones And I will try to fix you I see the string They run down your face When you lose something You cannot replace yeah. See the string They run down your face And I, I Oh, 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 see the stream, they run down your face. I promise you, I will learn from my mistakes. Yeah, see the stream, they run down your face, and I. Lights will guide you home and ignite your bones, and I will try to fix you. I so can see this stream. They run down your face When you lose something You cannot replace now See the string, yeah They run down your face And I Oh See the string Amen, amen. Thank you, Brother Loxton, for this special rendition on her behalf. Amen. It is well received. Amen. And now we're going to invite the little nieces and nephews of Sister Donola to come forward. And they will be doing an acrostic poem for the many ways in which she touched their lives. She was a remarkable person, not just with adults, but also with the children and the nieces and nephews, they have so many great things to say about her. And when they get older, I am sure, when they, when they are older and reflect upon her life, they would have sweet, sweet memories of their dear auntie, Sister Donola. Good evening, everyone. So there's one person missing, but we have an audio recording of, of her saying her part. So she, she's represented by Donlin. Hermia, she's missing.
Danola was devoted in everything she did. Auntie did it. D. Danola was devoted in everything she did. Auntie dedicated her life to helping others in need. D. Um, oh, Danola, uh, Danola made herself oblivious to the negatives around. Auntie only wore a smile and refused to wear a frown. N. Danola was my nice auntie. In this box lies a noble person on the road to eternity. Oh, although Donala was obstinate, a bit stubborn in her way, Auntie was observant and she knew how to pray. Oh, Donala was a loving Auntie you wish you had. Auntie knew how to laugh whether things were good and whether things were bad. A, A, A is what Donala would say Whenever she meets someone, Auntie was very affectionate, whether persons are old or young. So rest in D. Devoted, dedicated. Oh, oblivious, only a smile. N, nice auntie, noble. Obstinate, observant. Loving, laugh when things were good and bad. A, 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 affectionate. <laughs> we love you, auntie. May your soul eat it. We love you, Auntie. May your soul rest in peace in the arms of Jesus. D. Well done by the nieces and nephews. Amen. And I liked how Hamaya chipped in all the way from the U.S., but you still get to hear her voice. That was very nice. So now we're moving on to the session of worship. And if you're following your program, you would have noticed on the program there was a second reading. However, we would skip that second reading. The first one was already done by um, Sister Monique St. Clair. So we're going into a time of celebration. Amen? A joyous moment. So we're not here to be sad as if we have no hope. We have a hope in Jesus Christ. And we're going to celebrate. And as there's a song that said, there's two times to praise the Lord. When you feel like it and when you don't feel like it, still praise the Lord. Amen. You should bless the Lord at all times. And his praise should continually be in our mouth. Our soul must always make a boast in the Lord. Amen. So I invite the worship team to come back again, stand, clap your hand, rejoice with the family this evening as we have this wonderful home-going ceremony for our dear sister. Amen? Praise. Praise the Lord. Let us stand once again. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 We praise you, O oh God. You are an awesome God. There is truly nobody like you, Jesus. We bless your name this afternoon and we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We worship you, O oh God, this afternoon. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. He is indeed Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. He is enough. He is enough to bring us through the difficult times. He is enough for you and for me. His name is Jaira. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
We're just waiting on the musicians. And Lord, we just bless your name. We praise your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. be more loved than I am right now wasn't holding you up so there's nothing I can do to let you down it doesn't take a trophy to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am right now going to a storm but I won't go down I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out. You won't cross an ocean, so I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now. You are Jaira. You are enough. Jaira. You are enough And I will be content In every circumstance You are Jaira You are enough Forever enough Always enough More than enough Forever enough Forever enough Always enough More than enough I'm already loved I'm already chosen I know who I am I know what you've spoken I'm already loved More than I could imagine That is enough Yes, Lord I'm already loved I'm already chosen I know who I am I know what you've spoken I'm already loved More than I could imagine That is enough Oh yes You are Jaira You are enough Jaira You are enough I will be content in every circumstance. You are Jaira. You are enough. Forever enough. Always enough. More than enough. Forever enough. Forever enough. Always enough. More than enough. Forever enough. Forever enough. Always enough, Lord, you're more than enough, forever enough, forever enough, always enough, more than enough. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never failed me, and all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up. Until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good, yeah. With every breath that I am made, and I will sing. Of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire And in darkest nights You are close like no other I've known you as my father 
I know you as my friend and I have lived in the goodness of God all my life and all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every prayer that I am able and I will say of the goodness of God your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me and my life laid down I surrender now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running Goodness is running out, it's running out to me. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every prayer that I am made I will sing of the goodness of God Just give the Lord a clap offering right where you are We are going to sing of your goodness For it runs after us every single day, Lord Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're going to do this last song. You are God alone. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Indeed, he alone is God. In the good times, in the bad times, he sits on the throne. No one can remove him. No one can take away his authority. He has the final seat. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Only 
You're the only God who saved man. Praise will never end. You're the only God who's worthy of everything. of worship. Amen. And we're climaxing nicely. We're getting there. And at this time, we wish if there's anyone who would like to view the body for the final time, this is your opportunity to do so. And at the same time, we're going to invite the
the man of God, Bishop Simon John, to come to the podium to deliver the encouragement for this evening. Amen. So come view the body for the final time. Amen. Remember the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. You can do it. You have the willpower. You can do it. You are more than a conqueror. Amen. Hallelujah. Our weeping, the Bible says it will be for a night. But joy, it comes in the morning. Amen. We heard a reading from Ecclesiastes. There's a time for everything under the sun. And this is a time here, not just to mourn, but a time to also um, um, be encouraged and remain faithful and, and receive strength of the Lord. Amen. So remember your dear sister, your dear friends, your dear cousin, your dear classmate, your dear workmate, whatever way you want to remember her. Remember your dear sister, Donola. We would only take two minutes for the viewing, and after that, we're going to get straight into the word. But this is not the end. Eh? There is a hope. Yes. There is a hope. <laughs> right after the message, we're going to have a special prayer for the members of the family. And we'll invite Bishop Hopkins to do this prayer for us after the message is completed. <laughs> As we end the viewing, I just want to encourage one and all. The best time to get saved is at a funeral. Amen? Amen? So if you do not know the Lord as your personal Savior, listen to the words of encouragement that would be dispensed here this afternoon and to make the right choice. Put your hands together and welcome the man of God, Bishop Simon John. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Somebody give the Lord a praise this afternoon. Praise the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together and give the Lord a praise. Lord, let, me just, let me just remind you, I think this should be a celebration of a life that had been lived. All right? Uh, we just passed one of the biggest celebrations Grenada have ever known called Carnival. Everybody look at me like it's a strange thing. Carnival is a big celebration. Everybody would, not everybody, not me, would black themselves and paint them skin and do all kinds of stuff and then go and celebrate. Now we are celebrating a life that had been lived. Amen. But I find we really quiet, you know, we some kind of a frightened in a way like, well, uh, we might, something might happen. I, I don't like funerals, period. If I, if I never or ever want to ever not to do something is to really have to bury somebody. And I don't even like preaching at funerals. Because 
the person who is supposed to be the, the main person of attraction can't hear one word we say. They don't know what is happening. But they are supposed to be the main person of attraction. And this gives me a problem. Because I would have wanted to speak to the person. But here we have to speak about the person. That's the thing that gives me the most problem. So, uh, I would have to speak to the living. Amen. I said I would have to speak to the living. Amen. I could speak about the person. But I would have to speak to you who is alive. That's right. Amen. Let me take this opportunity to pay homage to my national bishop. Bishop Richard Hopkins. God bless you, sir, and my ministers and assistants and the people of this sanctuary, the, the angel of this sanctuary, his assistants and everybody else. God bless you. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to use your facility for this occasion. I want to begin this evening very short because I just told you I don't like preaching at funerals. So I'll be extremely short. For those of you who doesn't know me, let me tell you I am Simon. My middle name is Peter and my son name is John. So from here on in, anyway you see this, Really handsome guy. That's me. Simon Peter John. So, you can shout me anytime. Even though I don't know exactly who the person is, I will still re respond. I, I just respond to anybody that will, that will heal me up. Amen. I want to say this evening... Or this afternoon, it's not yet evening, it's afternoon still. Uh, that it's a sad thing when a, a pretty young person passed on. Sometimes you have a lot of questions in your mind. As I was reflecting today, that was around 10 o'clock this morning, on... Danola per se. This question came to my mind. She was only 33 and she passed. And I was thinking, Lord, you read in the Bible and you read men was 975. And we would have called them old. If they were in our time. But I realized when a man reached 120, 125, he knows how to live. The man is a young man. But here we are at the age of 33. Our young sister had passed. In my younger days, that would have troubled me because I would might have been thinking, well. How come a young person die? You know, back then, uh, in my early 20s, late 20s, early 30s, you hear people 70, 75, 80, 90. And you say, well, they live a life, you know, and they reach an age, so that's okay. But when you hear 33, that should start to give some of us a problem, right? Yeah, I mean, death is no respect of person. Age doesn't matter to death. What we need to do, those of us who are living, is to be prepared. Because no one knows when your number would call. Amen. Remember, I can't preach to the dead, so I'll preach to you. 
Especially if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Amen. We will have a problem. Let me say this. I read a little article from a gentleman one time. He said in his lifetime what he noticed is that most people seems to fear coming in the church vertically. But for sure, they will enter horizontally. And I tried hard to understand the reason he makes such a statement. Why? Because people are not paying much mind to preparation for death. Young as you may be, old as you think you are, there will come a time when you will have to answer the call. Are you ready? Are you ready? That's my question. Well, for some reason this afternoon, we, we probably had the same scripture that... Uh, would have been read or uh, did be read earlier on from Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. Uh, that was the same scripture I was preparing on. But while sitting there, another scripture floated to mind from the book of St. John chapter number 11. And I thought, Lord, you have already said the word by the reading. So now I'll turn to John chapter 11 and speak shortly. On that particular scripture where I would be using parts of that same scripture that had been read from Ecclesiastes chapter number 3. Because it's very important that every last one of us know that your season will be over. Amen. And... We have a notion, or you hear a notion going around uh, sometimes that uh, I try to really keep myself really calm because I'm a preacher by calling, just a preacher. I, I just sometimes lost it and just go. So I try to keep it really, really calm and make it short. We have the notion that when I'm dead, I'm done. That is so far from the truth. You're not a dog or any other kind of animal who doesn't have a soul. When you die, your life just begun. As a baby just born, when you die physically, you now begin to live. So I want you to be prepared this afternoon. If you have not yet been prepared for the eventuality. This is a good time. Amen. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. It seems like if that sounds kind of strange. But I realize that we made a lot of preparation for plenty of stuff. Amen. I made a preparation. I made some preparation before I got married. Years before. I made preparation to build my house years before. I made preparation for a lot of stuff. When my wife and I, we just celebrated 30 years of marriage. When she and I was quoting, one of the things I said to her, you know, I'm going to own a vehicle one of these days. It took me about, maybe about 10 or 12 years after I had said that to her. And she reminded me when I bought my first vehicle. Preparation. I was preparing. It, it, it just dawned to my mind that people joined the, uh, the um, burial society, is what they call it. And they pay in some funds every month. 
preparing for the burial preparation but not people not preparing for the return of the Lord so they live careless lives any kind of how I mean they did, they did that because they know they're coming on in age I'm 59 I'll be 60 in the next couple of months but I'm preparing to die no because I have a belief that as long as the Lord tarry I'll be here until he comes so I'm preparing to die, right? My preparation is for the return of the Lord. Amen. So I'm not really looking to say, well, I'm going to join this society and do this and do that for when I die. I want to speak briefly to the, the family and for those of you here who, um, who is mourning. It's okay to mourn, but don't mourn without a hope. Amen. Don't mourn without a hope. We know a new Danola. I heard a lot of nice things about her. She and I communicated uh, every now and again when I pass at her business place because I do sales. When I pass at a business place, she will run out and give me a hug and, Pastor, you're good. Yeah, I'm all right. And so on. Never knew that she had an internal problem. She always will be energetic. She always will want to smile when she see you. I hear the little guy say, hey, hey, what, Pastor? You're only today, man. I say, yes, man. We move out only today. First word, hey, hey. And I heard the little guy say that. I say, what? I'll show Danola. He knew her well. She has that kind of a personality that will make you feel good. Even though in the morning you're not feeling too good. But that personality will make you feel good. That's the kind of person she was. I could say that because I had the experience of her. And morning times when we pass up at Mardi Gras. But here she is, lying in state. Her shell, as uh, the moderator, Sister Marilyn, would have put it, lying in state. But her spirit, I know, is with the Lord. Because of our, com our communication, our uh, communication when we spoke to each other, and she said to me, she said, Pastor, I'm making a very serious decision to rededicate my life to the Lord. I said, nothing better you could do, sister. I said, that will taste better than your food you're cooking. She said, yes, and then when I, I, I'm making that decision and I intend to turn back or to, to do no foolishness or them kind of stuff, she said, I really seriously dedicated my life to the Lord. Amen. The only problem I had or the only uh, disappointment I had, she had to share a testimony. And I said to her the morning when we were coming down in the car, I said, sister, when time you share that testimony, people won't get saved. She said, I'm going to share it, Pastor. Hold on. I don't know if this is or if she had said anything before, but I didn't hear it. But she had promised to. So in all this, we shouldn't get too perturbed or mourn like we don't have any hope at all. Because of the person of Jesus Christ. Whom she did say to me. That she was rededicating her life to. Because the word of God said to me. Once you have Jesus Christ man. You have life. Somebody didn't hear it. I said, the word of God said to me, once you have Jesus Christ, you have life. Jesus 
speaking in his word from John chapter 11. Uh, I think a lot of us who uh, study Bible and get into Bible and so on knows the story quite well of the passing of one of his really good friend, Lazarus. What the word of God said to us that he loved Lazarus, he loved Mary and he loved Martha, a family. He loved them. But there was a time when he was one place and the news came to meet him that his friend was sick. But Jesus is a kind of man, you know. He is a different kind of person. When your friend's sick, you would want to visit them. But in this instance, when the message came to him, the Bible said in John 11 that he abode where he was two days more. But after the next message came, they said, well, your friend did. Jesus said, no, you didn't understand what was happening. What was happening is this, what you think is the reality, is just to show the glory of God. So he said, our friend Lazarus is not dead, but he's asleep. Physically, we could say Danola is dead. Medically, it is pronounced. Amen. By the state. The funeral agency had to do up a document. And the, the, the hospital have to do up the document. The doctor have to do up his document. Everything has to come together and pronounce this young lady dead. But in the eyes of the Lord, she's asleep. Amen. We're going to get to that in a minute. Father, help us this afternoon as we go through your word. In Jesus' name. I want to draw your attention to that same chapter I was speaking about. John chapter 11, I, I, want to, I want to just paraphrase some of these because it's a lovely portion of scripture that will give you that energy really to want to serve the Lord, to want to be a child of God. Because you see, once you die in Christ, you have hope. I said once you die in Christ, you have hope. We were just reading from Ecclesiastes. There is a time and a season under the heavens or on the earth for everything. A time to live and a time to die. But that part of the dying business is a serious thing that affects us all the time. When my mom died... Uh, three years ago, probably we knew she would have died. But when the day came and they told me that she passed, I almost ran off the road. Because they gave me the message while I was driving. So I had to slow down the vehicle and take my time to get where I was going. She passed. It seems to me that we could never come to terms with the time to die. Living, we have all the experience, all the smiles, all the time we share together. But when it comes to dying, it seems to me that that part of it is a really big problem. We shouldn't die at all. I said we shouldn't die at all. But here we read from John chapter 11 that a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany. The tongue of Mary and her sister Martha. 
And what this verse 2, it was the same matter, the same Mary that anointed the feet of Jesus. And you could go on reading this thing because it's going to take me some time. And as I was saying earlier on, the news went to Jesus that his friend Lazarus was sick. But he didn't bother with coming quickly to see Lazarus. He spent some more days in Granans. And then the message reached him again. Your friend Lazarus is dead. And he turned to his disciples and he said, listen, this thing you hear they're saying about Lazarus dead, don't bother much about that. Lazarus is asleep. So the disciples believe in their mind that, well, if he's asleep, he's taking some nice physical rest. So he's going to wake up just now. So give him some time, let his rest. Let him rest. Let him take some time. Jesus said, okay. Let's go and see our friend Lazarus. They say he's dead. He said, let's go and see him. They say he's sick. He said, let's stay here. Now I want you to see something here. The news came that he was sick. He didn't go and visit him. When he, they said that he was dead, they said, he said, let's go and see him. So they left and the scripture began to speak to us. They say, as they left going, he said, let me tell you really what happened. Huh? Lazarus is really dead. But this thing that happened here, I'm glad I was not there when he was alive. So you would able to see that God has the power to raise the dead. Some people say when they're dead, they're done. God has the power to raise you. I don't care where they put you. If they bury you in the sea, some people say, burn my body, sprinkle the ashes in the sea. But there is a time coming. Amen. There is a time coming when everything will have to give up the dead. Amen. And the Bible said, they went to the place and when he was coming, the news came back to Mary and Martha that Jesus was coming. Amen. And when Martha heard, she ran out. She said, watch me. If you were here, we, brother would not have died or no. Jesus said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you this. Didn't I say to you that I am the resurrection and the life? No, you will experience what I'm saying. So let's put this thing in perspective. Now any child of God who died in the Lord... You could rest assured that you have life everlasting. Let me say that again. Any child of God who die in the Lord. Don't think that we could just live anyhow and think, well, we good. No, no, no. We have to make this thing right. Amen. I want to run down to verse 25 because we had to get out of this place. Jesus said unto her because of the question Martha was asking in verse 24. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now I want to see verse 26 because it's very important that Jesus said these words from his own mouth. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Though he was dead. Though he die physically. Spiritually he go live. Amen. Though he die in this physical body. As we said today. We know what happens. Uh, we knew what was happening to our young sister. The pain, the agony, the things that she was going through, we could just safely say yes, she's been resting or she's gone from all the problems, all the pain all the crying, all the time we look at her and see that she was going through that phase of pain and sorrow, we could say yes, she's gone resting from that physically but her spirit, oh glory to God, I feel something bubbling on the inside, but her spirit will live on because the Jesus Christ said I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me 
though he was dead physically yet shall he live because I am the resurrection and the life glory to God I am the person who gave life and could take it again I am the person who could save you oh Lord of mercy I'm saying he stood before the tomb of Lazarus and he said Lazarus I didn't come here to call Danola Danola comfort that might be real problems the whole sanctuary might be empty in a few seconds so we will leave her alone I believe that she felt that the Lord wanted her to be there so she obliged the Lord saw her pain and suffering and he said daughter the best place for you is to be with me I believe that when the Lord said that to her she just said Lord let your will be done Martha didn't understand that she said Lord I know he will rise again in the resurrection but Jesus said listen to me Martha I am the resurrection and the life any man that has me in him has life amen once you have me you have life even though the person is dead physically in me they have life so i want to encourage somebody this afternoon don't go and mourn or think well uh, she's gone forever somebody said no 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 we must not say that we lost a loved one in christ no we don't lost loved ones in christ the only transition from the outer realm to the spiritual realm the body goes back to where it came from but the life is being transitioned into the place where all of us are striving to reach that place where jesus said you will have life uh, and have it more abundantly glory to god so we don't say that we lost that loved one but we would say that she is gone for such a time when the bible said that all of us uh, will be caught up together with them to meet the lord in the air and so shall we ever be with him somebody give the lord a praise lord help me to stay calm i don't need to be preaching hallelujah so the bible said that Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he was dead physically, yet shall he live. And the verse 26 really crowned it off nicely when he said, and whosoever liveth, and believeth in me shall never die though he was dead let's look at what we read from leviticus chapter number three there is a time and a season under the heavens for everything for everything somebody for everything and everything here tells me that the time to live huh? there is a time to live and oh my Jesus a time to live and a time to die I don't like to use that word but it is very important because we need to know that if the Lord tarry, lots of us would not be standing here vertically. But many of us will be here horizontally. And somebody will be saying the eulogy, will be doing a nice piece. There may be not even locks and somebody else might be taking your place and singing a nice little melody um song you know and, and all these sort of things we 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 would not hear that 
but it will be done because our season is over it doesn't matter how long it takes amen some season may last for a very long time some is short you know and i always view this thing as as the crops that we have growing in our island we have mango season we have uh uh um what, what is the big season right now i'm um, skin up all the way you pass people selling and they calling mr you you know buy no skin up today no ma'am i really want any and, and you you will a lot of that is on the market right now that season will be over amen we will just see the trees there with a lot of green leaves some might be starting to bud a little bit after some time but the season of skin up will be over maybe mangoes or corn and all these other things will that season will will spring up but that season again will pass i'm saying that every last one of you that is sitting in the pews including me who is speaking to you our season will be over there is a time and a season under the heavens for everything a time to live let's make the best of our living you know it, it burns my heart when you see families living like warmongers quarrels and fight and all kinds of trouble and you you have to always go in a calling and trying to calm things down and, and when you're speaking everything seems to simmer down but once you hang up the phone somebody will call you in the next 15 minutes and they'll say well you're just talking about it seems to me like things get worse that season will be over and listen what they're fighting over land I said, God have mercy. You came and you meet this thing right here. My grandmother came and me today. My grandmother, grandmother, great grandmother, grandmother came and she met today. Same thing with my grandfather. Why should I come fighting over it? I will die and it will remain the same place. Nobody, absolutely nobody could take nothing from here. When they're going, the scripture said, naked we came and naked we shall return to the dust i'm saying to you in this life the time to live live it good live good with somebody live good with your relative live good with your neighbors it pays to live good i heard a little story just recently I had to laugh. I tell you, I really laugh. I don't know if it's the same final agency. I don't know. But I heard a young man, well, not a young man. He was in his middle 60s. He died. And the day of his funeral, when they bring the coffin and put it in the sanctuary, as this one is, and the people came viewing this man stood up and he watched everybody viewed the coffin. And when everybody finished, he went and he stood over the coffin and he was looking at the man. And nobody knows what he was saying. Eventually, he lifted his head, watch all around, and he shoved his hand down inside the coffin and began to feel. And the, the funeral agent man came and he said, what are you doing? He said, well, listen, two weeks ago, this man pulled a cutlass and nearly killed a man for some land up there. Two weeks. He said he was really serious. He would have killed that man. But look him lying here. So I'm checking to see if he go with any part of the land. I'm saying, saints and children of God, we don't have to fight over land. 
we came and we meet it there and we're going to leave it right there and go. Another generation will come and it will remain there. Amen. So we don't have to fight over this thing. What we have to do is to thank God for what he has blessed us with. Make the best use of it, man. There is a time to live. Live good. Live with everybody. Even if your neighbor or your enemy for that matter. In fact, the Bible wants us to be so careful about this. Jesus said, if your enemy hungry, feed him, man. If he thirsty, give him to drink. And if you do that with a graceful heart. Man, I tell you, heaping as coals of fire on the man's head. I believe that Nola was that kind of person. Amen. When I, when I, when I heard of a situation up there, and the reason she was not in the shop, I just, when I met her, I said, but well, you something else, you know? She said, peace is what I'm about, pastor. Peace. Could you imagine that? She just said, peace is what I'm about. And she left it right there. I said, to God be the glory. That's a heart that has changed, man. Come on, somebody. That's a heart that has changed. So I'm saying to every last one of you, your season will come to an end. This is your time of living. Live good. But most of all, live to serve the Lord Jesus. It is very important. Let us all stand together. I said to you, I'll be very short. I feel in that bubble on the inside. But I know we had to get because there is time. We have to get out of here and get into the symmetry. Amen. Bless the Lord. Let's bow ahead. Father, I pray this evening for every last person that is standing in this sanctuary. I pray for those, oh God, most of all who doesn't know you as Savior and Lord. This evening, uh, this afternoon will be a good opportunity for them to accept you as Savior and Lord of their life. I pray this afternoon that as your word went forth in such a short notice that they will come to themselves and understand that they need a Savior in their life. I pray that God at this moment, as you speak to the heart of those who now are being convicted by your word, this is the time of living. So they ought to live to serve you. God, they will just walk from the seat and say, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. If you are such a person, you could just walk from where you are as we pray. And come to the front of the, 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 the audience. We will pray for you right here. We will lead you to Christ. I pray, oh God, even for those who had accepted you as Savior and Lord. Will now, Lord, come to that knowledge of understanding that we need to live that life that will be pleasing to you. So when, Lord, our number is called, we could be ready. I pray this evening that you will touch the heart of people. Every person right here. Save and unsave. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus name. Any person you want to accept Jesus as Savior and Lord. This is a good opportunity. And this is a good place to do it. You could just walk out from where you are. There's lots of men of God, women of God. Even when I turn over the mic, if you want to do that, there's still people you could come and speak to. They will pray for you and they will lead you to Christ. Amen. Come on, put your hands together, somebody, and give the Lord a praise. He's worthy. At this time, I'll turn right over to our sister Marilyn. Praise the Lord. We thank God for his word. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. You can have your seats. We're almost to the end. We only have two more items to go. And at this time, we really want to pray for the family. So we were going to quickly ask them to come to the front. 
mommy and daddy and brothers, sisters, aunts, come to the front, and we're going to ask our dear bishop to cover you with prayer. Amen? We know that death has a sting, and we could never get, you know, comfortable um, with, de with death. But we know that there is grace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Bishop Hopkin will lead us in that prayer. So come quickly, family members. Amen. A good moment to stand together, stay together. You know, bind up yourself with some cords of love. This is an opportune time to shoulder and support each other through this time. And not just this time, but after that. Amen. Be there for one another. Thank you, Sister Marilyn, and pleasant good afternoon to one and all. And let me take the opportunity on behalf of the Church of God of Prophecy, Grenada District, to, from, uh, on behalf of my family and myself, to extend our condolences to the family. We trust that God will bless you, and as you mourn, we mourn with you. And we are praying that God will really comfort you. Could we bow together in prayer? Can I ask the congregation to stand with us as we pray? Gracious God and Father, we thank you for the privilege that we can come into your presence. God, sometimes we wonder why we have to give thanks in a time like this. But God, we recognize that even for the family to face what they are facing now, it is your grace. And therefore, we thank you for that. We thank you for mercy, your love, and everything. God, we even thank you for Danula. Thank you for the second chance that you gave to her. Because God, we recognize that you are a God of a second chance. And I pray that what had happened here will cause someone whom you have spoken to time and again, who have rejected you, to believe and have hope that there is going to be a second chance. But it is not something that we can guarantee. Because none of us know when the hour will come. But we thank you because in everything you said to us to give thanks. So I lift the family before you. I ask for your comforting power upon their life in this time of bereavement. I'm asking you to keep them by your grace that they will face, oh God, what they are facing at this time. And so that you have been with us in the past, you are with us now, and we pray that you will be with them in the future. Oh God, strengthen them. Be by their side every moment of the day. That every time they think of the loved one, that they will understand that you love her greater than they. And therefore, that they will understand also, just as the word of God has said, there is a time to leave and a time to die. What is important here is about the condition in which we die. So therefore, I pray that you will cause every one of us to be ready for in such an hour as we think not, death could come or the Lord could come, that we be ready. So comfort them. And I pray that you will fulfill your word by being with them throughout this time of mourning. God, as you promised, that you not leave them nor forsake them, but that you be with them always, even unto the end. Bless and keep the family together. And continue to let them experience you and live a life that be pleasing to you. Bless everyone that came to sympathize with them. We pray your blessings. And now as we are about to depart, 
to rest in place. We ask that you be with us and that your Holy Spirit will comfort us in every way. We pray to Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Bishop Hopkins. You can now return to your seats. Remember to continue to pray for the family. Amen. Give them your support. Call them, you know, give them a little hug every now and again, check in on them and make sure that they're doing all right. I already admire the way in which, you know, they support each other today and the strength that they exhibited here today. Amen. Very, very strong and united. Keep that going for the honor and glory of God. So as we've come to the end, just before we would exit the building, we wish to express thanks to each and every one of you. And I would call for this. Sister Cindine Alexander, she would come and do that on behalf of the family. Pleasant afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Donola St. Clair's family, we express our heartfelt thanks and appreciation to everyone for coming out today to be a part of her transition ceremony. Thank you, Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus Christ, for blessing us with our special gift, Donola. We appreciate and are very happy that she's been one of our family members for the past 33 years. She has been a great inspiration and motivator to us all. Special thanks to the pastor and members of Lucas Street New Testament Church for allowing us to use this facility to conduct the transition ceremony of our loved one, the Nola. Bishop Simon John, Church of God of Prophecy, Belmont, for delivering the sermon, and members of Belmont, sorry, members, Bishop and pastors of Belmont, Canal Road and Mackey, Church of God of Prophecy, for your prayers, words of encouragement, telephone calls, and visitation. Thank you. We greatly appreciate your support. Sister Marilyn Francis, thank you for moderating this afternoon's proceeding. To the worship and the technical teams and all those who played a key role in this afternoon's ceremony, thank you. To our relatives and friends for your overwhelming and continuous support. Through prayers, contributions, telephone calls, words of encouragement and visitation. Thank you. To the Williams family, we express heartfelt, thanks, heartfelt gratitude, appreciation and thanks for your contribution and support in the life of our loved one. We say special thank you to Mr. Leroy Tika and his crew for constructing the tomb to house our dearly beloved Donola. To Ms. Shirley and colleagues of the Dialysis Center, staff of the Female Medical Ward in the General Hospital, thank you. To our relatives and friends in the diaspora, we say thank you also for your continuous support and contributions. To the management and staff of Bailey's Funeral Home, thank you. Once again, to each and every one of you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen, a wonderful expression of thanks. Thank you, Sister Cindy, for this. And we've come to the end. It is now time for the body to exit the sanctuary. And we're invited to leave as well, but first, we would like the family to take the lead in this. So please have a little patience and wait for the family to follow right after. As we exit, we also invite the worship team to come back and give us a final song to end this celebratory service. Also keep in mind that the entombment will be at the bottom cemetery. That is the one that is closest to the keep left. That is where she would be laid to rest in the tomb. Amen. God bless you and thank you. You have been a wonderful group of people. Now the worship team.
Praise God. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will
No, look at me, the girl is down here. Yes, that is it. I'm going to have you. Let's go by the bay of 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 the bay
Okay, cool.
if, if, if you go ahead and talk now, it's only, uh, it's only when we start to open up. Good afternoon again, everybody. And we're here to do the last part of this, uh, what we call celebration. Although this part of it normally does bring some sadness. And so we want to, we want to begin this evening. So we like everybody who wants to witness to just gather around. And we would want to commence this evening by having a word of prayer um, that will be done by Pastor Gordon Cox. So at this time, we will allow Pastor Gordon Cox to just open us in a word of prayer. Could we all just reverence the Lord for a moment? Let us all pray. Then my telling God, Hallelujah. God, we thank you for this opportunity again. God, for 33 years, we have spent our time with her, God. She made us laugh. Had a wonderful time with her. But God, now you decide, God, that you want her back with you and then we give Abraham the instruction he said he's looking for a city which had foundation whose builder and maker is God father we thank you because we know you said in your word that you go and prepare a place for us that where you are there we will be also bless this precious soul God as we send her home to you father and God we pray that the spirit of almighty God going to continue God to give us the remembrance oh God to strengthen our memories of our God Jesus have a divine way God bless this occasion God, because this is the last time we will be together with her as we send her home with you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. 
I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, I comfort me. Father and God, we bring our sister again before you. As we do our final rites, we pray to God that you will take her into a rest. You will comfort her, Lord. You will continue to bless the family, to keep them strong, to give them enduring mercies as they complete this mourning period. We pray to God that all the weaknesses, those that feel a sense of loss, will know that there is no loss in those that die in you. But there is a great resurrection morning when you will call Danola home. You call her out from the grave. And so we all will be with her together with you in the clouds. Give every one of us that comfort and heart to know that this is not the end, but we all will have life eternal with you in glory. In Christ Jesus we pray. Amen. The scripture say all flesh is like grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withered, the flower fall away, but the word of the Lord endure it forever. There shall be no more death, nor mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old have passed. A new body and a new life has begun. We will now want to render a song when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. I need some of the singers to just render that part of the song. I'm not a singer. I could talk pretty good, but I can't sing. When we all get to heaven, what a day.
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The Lord Jesus said to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And so we want to commit our sister into this tomb where she would be resting until that day, or that great day of the Lord, when he would call her from this back to life. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. He who had called us from this life back to him. He is the one that will stand one day or bust the clouds and call every last one of us by name and said, come up hither, be with me from now into eternity. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. We want to just have that prayer and then we will just do that committal as we commit our sister into the keeping of the Lord. Almighty God, you who strengthen your children with your holy presence, hear us now and give us faith to go forward. We pray, Lord, that your will shall be done in all things. Let us perceive let us not perceive that this is a time of suffering. But let us today grasp by faith that she is not lost forever, but she is in your arms. You have in our lives, she had many pain and has been as she was in this life. But now, Lord, she are resting in your arms where there is comfort. Yeah. Therefore, we know that you are near when we are afflicted. So we pray that you will guide us in our grief. Just as you have conquered the grave or conquered death on the cross when you was resurrected. Gently lead us from darkness, Lord, into your marvelous light. And this day we pray that Danola will rest in your wonderful arms. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We want to sing another, we want to sing another, another song. There's a land that is fairer than me. And by faith we can see it afar For the Father waits over the way To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet, in the sweet, by and by We shall meet on the beautiful shore The melodious song of the blessed and the spiritual sorrow no more. Nor a child for the blessing of rest. Oh, in, in the, the sweet, in the sweet by and by, by we shall meet on the beautiful shore. In the sweet. By and by, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful show. To a bountiful father, to a bountiful father above. We will come for the tribute of praise, for the glorious gift of his love, and the blessing that 
shall meet on that beautiful shore. And Father, as we commit our sister Danola into your love and care, we command that her spirit will depart in peace. As we commit her body into this tomb, we pray that you will comfort the family, you will give them the strength to stand knowing that one day all of us together will meet in the air. Anticipating that great morning when you will call everyone home. We now lay her body, put it into this tomb, and we say, earth to earth, ashes to ashes as we commit her we anticipate that great resurrection when the dead in Christ shall come forth first with a new body and we which are alive and remain will be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with him in Jesus' name. Amen. Father along it. When the trumpet sounds, and the morning is seated and bright and fair, when the Savior is shouted over and over the show, and the road is called up yonder all the day, when the road when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. On that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the sky, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. Labor for the master from the dawn to set his sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all our life is over and the work on earth is done, and the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder,
What a friend we have in Jesus. All the sins and grace of What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what we see of the
Amen. Why is that is taking some rest so we can complete the the last portion of the smoothing off of the mouth of this tomb? We want to bring this this committal to a close. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, "Right." Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they that may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Amen. Amen, says the book of Revelation, chapter number 14 and verse number 13. We want to pray as we close this thing off for this evening, giving our sister enough time to rest until the Lord will call her by name out of this tomb. As we leave here, I pray that the comfort of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit will be with those who sorrow. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, now and forever, in Jesus' name. Amen. And may the peace of Amen. God that passeth all understanding Amen. keep our hearts and our minds through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the blessings of the Lord be upon every last one of you in the precious name of Jesus. Depart in peace and let the comfort of God reign in your heart richly. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Your voice, come back, sing another song. Jesus, 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 I've got you on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got you on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got you on my mind. I've got Jesus on my mind. So when you hear me pray, when you hear me pray, I've got you on my mind. When you hear me pray, I've got you on my mind. Oh, when you hear me pray, I've got you on my mind. I've got Jesus on my mind. Oh, Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. I've got Jesus on my mind. Oh, when you hear me singing, I've got him on my mind. I say, when you hear me singing, I've got him on my mind. When you hear me singing, I've got him on my mind. I've got Jesus on my mind. Oh, Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. Jesus, 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 I've got him on my mind. I've got Jesus on my mind. Oh, so when you see me dancing, I've got him on my mind. When you see me dancing, I've got him on my mind. Oh.
when you see me dancing up, got him on my mind. I got Jesus on my Oh, I say, Jesus, Jesus. We got him on our mind. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. We got him on our mind. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We got him on our mind. I've got Jesus on my Oh, so when you see me, when you see me shouting, I've got him on my mind. I say, when you see me shouting, I've got him on my mind. I say, when you see me shouting, I've got him on my mind. Oh, I've got Jesus on my mind. Yeah, no, the pet, I won't take the pet. 